All the years that I have been in the ministry, I've noticed something. <clears throat> I don't really know what to make of it. Yes, I do. The first is that outside of Easter, Mother's Day is one of the largest attendance Sundays. Father's Day typically is one of the lowest attended. Now, as I saw it raining outside this morning, I thought, great, we're going to be packed this morning because all those golf outings are just going to crash and burn. Everybody's got to show up. Well, it didn't work out. So, I'm just kind of, you know, telling myself that everybody here is actually at the East Campus to hear Jeremy Fry because he's one of the sons of the congregation coming back. So I'm imagining an East Campus church just absolutely packed to the gills. So I'm okay. So you guys are off the hook from me really ragging on you for showing up. I mean, you're the guys that showed up. <laughs> Father's Day. You know, as I, as I think about Father's Day, I wanted to, you know, come up with some words of wisdom for all the dads gathered here so that you could become better fathers. And for myself, so I could become a better father too. So I jumped on a, you know, website, because that's what you do. You, when you want wisdom just to uh, fill yourself, you jump on a website and look what's out there. And I went to, I think, uh, an organization called the Organization of Fatherhood or something, I don't know. Um, and anyway, they, they had three points that I, I want to share with you this morning because I think they're kind of important. The first one is this. You probably have heard some of these before. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. Right. So dads, learn from this. Without a relationship with your children, it doesn't really matter what great truths or beliefs you have. They want a relationship with you. If they have a trusting relationship with you, guess what? They're going to learn the truths and the beliefs that you have. But you need to invest yourself in relationship with them. Now, you know, I know some guys that say, well, you know, I don't have a lot of time to give my kids, but I, what I do, I, I give them quality time. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think a kid wants? Quantity of time or quality time? They want quantity. Which means that we got to spend time with our kids, whether they're little tiny or they're adult. We're called to have that relationship with them. Second point is this. You're writing a gospel, a chapter each day by the deeds you do and the words that you say. Nice little poetic rhyme here. Men, read what you write, distorted or true. What is the gospel according to you? In other words, the actions that you do, the words that you speak, everybody's watching you, especially your kids. They're watching what you do, they're watching what you say, they watch what you behave, and that is how they learn a lot of those basic principles, those foundational truths. They want to see consistency, they want to, they want to have intimacy with you and, and discover just exactly what is important to you. And you may say one thing and you may do another, and now that does is confuse. Consistency. They're watching everything you do. Last one is this. If you have a testimony of life without lip, how will people know why you do what you do? In other words, there are those moments in life that become teaching moments. When you do something, when you make a major decision, it's important to share with your kids, both young and old, why you made that decision. What the basic principle was. What drove you to make that particular decision. Because they need to know, they need to understand, they need to, to grow in that process, right? Now, how many fathers here are doing an excellent job in all of those areas? Whoa! You mean you can be a better father? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I don't know about you, but I can be a much better father than I have been. I mean, I, I read these things and all it does is just kind of convicts me, you know? Kind of makes me feel, wow, I, I'm really messing up in this fatherhood thing. And, and I can, you know, throw in the towel of despair and say, whoop, I can't, I can't be perfect, so I'm not even going to try it. No, that's not it. So one element of Father's Day, I think, is, is an opportunity for men 
to recommit themselves to their kids. Men to recommit themselves to their family. Men to recommit themselves to their spouse. Men to recommit themselves to be that guiding Christian principle that it's at the heart of the family. So Father's Day can be a powerful moment in the life of a family. If men would only seize it. Father's Day can also be a, a powerful moment as children honor and love their fathers, whether their fathers deserve it or not. Father's Day is about grace. Undeserved love on the part of the dads and the kids. But Father's Day can also be something else. It can be a day of suffering. My wife shared in the children's sermon that, you know, she has a great dad and she underestimates that. He's a fantastic dad. She also made mention that I don't have a dad anymore. It's been almost 10 years since my dad passed away. And just hearing her say that, I was standing back there, just hearing her say those words, I, I could feel my throat just kind of getting thick. And it was, I could feel emotion just starting to come up, you know, and it's been over a decade. And I still suffer a little bit on Father's Day. Because it becomes a reminder to me that he's gone. And then I get the topic that I do for today. The theme of being in fellowship with Christ's sufferings. Any of you read that and think, man, I really kind of wish that it wasn't raining so I could be on the golf course today. Huh? Doesn't sound like a really fun topic, does it? I, I was standing in the back, but I could see all your faces even though I was standing in the back as the gospel was being read and you were hearing about Christ's crucifixion. I knew what you were thinking. It was like, what? Why are we reading this text now? This is summertime. We, we got past that Lent thing. Why are, we, why are we doing this, right? This isn't fun. This isn't uplifting. This isn't what I came to church to hear. To join in Christ's suffering. I don't know about you, but when I hear that, my initial reaction is this. I got enough suffering of my own without jumping into Christ's suffering as well. I don't need to add to my suffering. Father's Day is hard enough that, that I've lost my dad and he's not here and I can't share time with him and I can't reminisce with him and we can't go fishing or whatever it is we want to do. I got enough suffering without joining Jesus' suffering. So what in the world is this topic doing here on Father's Day? Bear with me. The passage from Philippians, the third chapter, the tenth verse, is this. I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of His resurrection. I want to know the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings. Becoming like Him in his death. 